Okay, so this is the Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Extended Diploma in Business Specification from first teaching in September 2016. Um, it's also for those studying the Enterprise and Entrepreneurship course. Now we're going to be looking at the seven P's, okay? Um, and this is worth roughly 20 marks um, in the Unit 2 Developing a Marketing Campaign exam. The seven P's are a combination of different components when developing a product or service to help meet the overall aim or objective of the business. Um, and the seven P's are product, price, place, promotion, people, process and physical environment. And hopefully we'll try and cover um, all of these during this little session. So the first one is product. Now the product or service that the consumer purchases, that is what product is. When we're looking at product or when we're trying to explain product, we should think about how the product looks, how it feels, how it tastes, smells and sounds. We're looking at the aesthetics of the product, okay? So what colour is it? When we're looking at cars, we have different coloured cars for different people. Um, what shape does the product have? Is it, is it a certain shape? Um, we've got different sizes, for instance, trainers. We've got children sizes, baby sizes, adult sizes. Um, and we're looking at the quality of the product as well. Is, is the product created with high quality materials or resources or is it created using low quality materials or resources? And remember, if you're using higher quality materials, you can justify a higher price um, attached to that. Um, we'll also look at the packaging. Is the packaging strong? Is it weak? What does it have on the packaging? Does it have the necessary or the correct ingredients written on it? with the correct legal information on it and then you can link that in with the legal aspect of your pestle maybe um, and your product should have a competitive advantage okay what makes it different what's its unique selling point it should have some for example let's take um, trainers the USP of trainers uh, for Nike trainers for instance these Nike Air Maxes are its air bubble okay not every trainer has an air bubble in it um, and it, it, you could argue that it, um, the customers of Nike Air Maxes could argue that it makes the trainer more comfortable to walk in. Um, we're also looking at the USB of maybe um, an Apple iPhone, for instance. The USB or, or its competitive advantage could be FaceTime. Okay. And we're looking at price now. So the price of the product or service a business charges. This is what price is. Um, price is influenced by production costs. Okay, so how much it costs to actually create the product, um, competitors, so if there's other competitors in the market, we can't really charge too high a price, okay, generally speaking anyway. Um, demand for the actual product, so if there's a, a lot of demand for the product, that should push the price up, yeah, it should push the price higher. Um, the brand as well, if the product has a brand and consumers are brand loyal, that should justify charging a higher price as well. Um, the availability and, and customer opinion. So if customers believe that this product is great, if there's a lot of positive feedback about the product, again, you should be able to charge a higher price. Um, and if it's widely available, um, that's always a good thing. Now we're looking at price, okay? So a low price usually means that this is for people on lower incomes, okay? Um, and it usually tries to illustrate to the consumer that um, it's, it's a low quality product, okay? When something is low priced, it's usually for low income people and it's, it's a low quality product. Now, a high priced product means that it's generally for high, uh, people on higher incomes, okay? Um, you could look at luxury goods, for instance, um, like a Gucci handbag, okay, or an Armani watch. It's more for people on higher incomes, generally speaking. Um, and um, we usually associate a high quality with these high priced products. Now I'm going to go over a few pricing strategies with you. These are going to be price skimming, price penetration, cost plus pricing, competitor based pricing and psychological pricing. Okay? In your exam what you want to do is you want to try and give the product or service a price. Okay? I told my students give it a price. Okay? Don't just say I think it should be price skimming or price penetration. Give it a price and then explain which pricing strategy you followed. Now the first pricing strategy we're going to look at is price skimming. 
and I'm just going to read it off here. So uh, price skimming is setting a high initial price and then reducing the price over time. Take Apple iPhones for example. When a new iPhone is released, it is at a high price. People pre-order. People set up camp outside the store the night before. People buy on the day. Once these brand loyal consumers have purchased the product, Apple then reduced the prices for those on lower incomes. Okay, and this works for mainly technological products. Okay, so a lot of technological products have price skimming as a pricing strategy. Again, it's setting a high price initially and over time reducing the price. Okay, to try and reach that wider target market, those on lower incomes. Um, and if you think about it, the first day, first week, first month, it will be at that high price. Over time, the price will decrease until a new iPhone is probably released, okay? Um, and then that new iPhone will have a high price associated with it as well. We're now looking at price penetration, okay? Now, this is setting a low initial price, lower than competitors, due to the fact you are a new business in the industry. Your low price allows you to steal competitors' customers and increase your market share. Your low price is temporary, it's not forever. Once you gain low customers, you then increase your price gradually, okay? Um, and a prime example of that is Netflix, okay? Now, a long time ago, probably before uh, my target audience uh, watching this video uh, was born, we had Blockbuster. And uh, you would go to Blockbuster and you would uh, rent out a video. Now, Netflix came um, and they were online, so there wasn't a physical store. Um, Netflix is online and obviously you download the movies or you, you, you used to stream them online, okay, like how we do now. Um, so what Netflix did is they actually um, came in with a price penetration strategy. They were much cheaper than Blockbuster and they could afford that because they didn't have a physical shop. They didn't have as many uh, employees as Blockbuster. Um, so they weren't really paying for rent um, and employees costs and vice versa and stuff like that, okay. Um, so yeah, so that's a prime example of price penetration. And over time, Netflix increased their prices, um, and they now uh, charge people for subscriptions. Now we've got cost plus pricing and competitor base pricing. So cost plus pricing, um, this is adding a percentage to the unit cost of the product. For example, if a pair of trainers cost thirty pounds to produce. When deciding the price, the business simply says we will add 20% of the cost of producing the trainers and this will be our new price. So 20% of £30 is £6. The business will therefore sell the trainers for £36 and will make a £6 profit. Okay. So with cost plus price, and that's all you're doing. The cost of the product, you're taking a small percentage of that, however much it costs to uh, uh, create the product, and you're adding that on top. Okay, and that's your price of the product. Now, we've got competitor-based pricing. This is setting prices in line with competitors. If on average, night trainers cost £70, then a new trainer business entering the industry should also charge £70. However, this may be an unwise decision if you are not established. Okay, so if you're not an established business, it doesn't really make sense to choose competitor-based pricing um, because you're going up against established companies. Um, loyal customers, if they see that your price is the same, they're, they're going to opt for someone that they're used to. Okay, They're not just going to switch as easy. So if you're a new business, uh, price penetration seems like the most logical idea, Okay, the logical pricing strategy. Now we've got psychological pricing. This is setting prices one penny less than a whole number. For example, um, setting a price for a product for £9.99 pence instead of £10. Okay, over here we've got an example of a service plan um, for nine ninety nine per month. Okay, instead of ten pounds a month, ten pounds seems a bit chunky. It's a whole number. It might not persuade the customer to purchase the service plan, but nine ninety nine seems a bit cheaper. It seems affordable. Let's go for that. Okay, we've also got another example here: five pounds ninety nine. Okay, instead of six pounds. Again, six pounds, whatever the product is, seems a bit mm, expensive, but five ninety nine seems cheaper okay it's a psychological thing it's a mental thing people deem it to be cheaper than it actually is we're looking at place now and when we're looking at place 
we're looking at where the customer can purchase the product, okay? And how the product is distributed to the consumer. Um, this can be in store, online on a website, or via a app, um, or it can be directly from the wholesaler or producer. For example, um, we've got a, a petrol station as an example of a place. So, uh, petrol stations, the best place to um, place a petrol station, you could argue, is on a motorway. Why? Because it has um, high inelastic demand. If your petrol is very low, you need to refill it, okay? So, if you're on the motorway, your petrol is very low, you need to refill it ASAP. You haven't got time to waste. You're going to go to the closest petrol station, so you're going to stop, up, stop off at your closest service station and refill your petrol. You don't care how much it costs. You rather, you'd rather avoid your car breaking down on the motorway, okay? Um, so that petrol station can charge a really high price. You're still going to pay for the petrol, however much it costs per litre. Okay? The same can be said with um, water bottles at an airport. Okay? Um, you know, you, there's nowhere else really to go. If that water bottle, usually, you know, in your corner shop, it costs you maybe 50p or 80 pence. But you're at an airport, you're about to board your plane, you need to buy this water bottle and it's costing you £2. Okay? You're going to buy that water bottle. We've got different distribution channels. Okay? So, um, this is the way the product gets from the producer to the consumer. So, a traditional method, it's still used today, traditional method is it goes from the producer. So, for example, if we're, if, for example, if we're looking at Sony, they produce Sony Playstations. Um, so, the producer will sell it to a wholesaler. Okay, so this big warehouse, they'll, they'll buy a lot of Sony Playstations. They'll then send it to retailers, okay, curries, um, or the game, um, and then they will sell it to the consumer, okay. Now at each point, at each point, the producer sells it for, we could say maybe uh, Sony Playstation for maybe £400 a piece, yes. Yeah? So for every single game, uh, Playstation 5, maybe it's being sold for £400 to the wholesaler. The wholesaler then sells them to the retailer for £450 a piece. Yeah, so £450 a console. The retailer then sells each individual PlayStation 5 to the consumer for £500. Okay, and I think that's how much uh, PlayStation 5 co uh, costs. I think they cost £500. We've got another method, okay? So from the producer to the wholesaler to the consumer. Nowadays, a lot of consumers go straight to Costco and they buy their items in bulk from there. Okay, so you're skipping the retailer, you're going straight to the wholesaler, and that means you get it at a cheaper price. Um, nowadays, more commonly, it's going straight from the producer to the consumer. Okay, with the use of the internet, we can now get the, uh, the product straight from the producer. You buy it online, the producer uh, ships it or delivers it straight to your door. Okay, so we're skipping out a lot of these. Um, the middleman basically we say okay so we're saving on a lot of costs we're getting it straight from the producer cheaper price okay now um promotion this is how the customer hears about the product or is persuaded to purchase the product promotion could be advertisements or special offers okay and we've got some examples of advertisements here we've got youtube ads facebook ads tiktok ads tv and radio ads posters, leaflets, business cards, local and national newspapers, uh, billboards, buses, any other form of transport, celebrity endorsements, and influencers. Okay? Now in your exam, you're, gonna, you're going to get a list of different advertisement methods with prices and costs associated with it. Okay? So that will be given to you already in your Part um, A exam. Now we've also got special offers, okay, so don't be scared, you can use these special offers if you wish to in your promotions, you can um, say that, you know, you might do a buy one, get one free, probably uh, the special offers will last only for the first week, probably, or for the first month, I wouldn't have them um, lasting for the whole campaign, you could do if you wish to, but I don't think that's a wise decision, okay, especially if your overall aim or goal is to increase sales or increase profit, okay, the special offers should last for maybe a week or a month, just to entice new customers, to grab competitors' customers. So we're looking at buy one, get one free, discounts, whatever percent off, 20% off, 
three for the price of one penny sales um, Holland and Barrett love doing a penny sale okay you buy one product for full price and you can get the same product for a penny okay um, half price and Black Friday sales now looking at people so this is all the people who make contact with the consumer throughout the purchase we're looking at the quality of the customer service that is provided to us we're looking at the product knowledge offered to us we're looking at if employees need to be trained okay we're looking at people now I've got two examples here for you the first one is buying a car from a car showroom you expect the salesperson to know about cars if they don't you would probably go to a different store all right so if I go to a uh, car showroom and I ask certain questions um, or if I'm buying off maybe if I'm buying a second-hand car of somebody and I'm asking certain questions like you know how much is the mileage uh, who's the previous owners um, what's the insurance going to be like on average um, or how much is uh, road tax for this car if, if the person that's selling me the car can't really answer these questions I'm going to question uh, the, the owner I'm going to question the seller and ask myself do they have product knowledge do they have knowledge on their own car do they understand what they're trying to sell me um, and I might then disappear and go to someone else okay I might politely decline say thank you for your time um, I'll have a think about it and probably go and look for another car to buy someone that can tell me a bit about the car we've got example two here if employees are trained to provide high quality customer service when interacting with you the consumer you would probably return and repeat purchase tell friends leave a positive review okay spread the positive word of mouth um, so it's not really a business example but really you can apply that to any business for example if I go into a restaurant um, and the employees uh, give me a high quality customer service they keep asking me um, you know how are you doing uh, Mossin um, do you need a refill do you need a drink shall I take that plate um, how's your evening um, I'm pretty sure you've all gone through that experience um, so if they if they provide me of high quality customer service what am I going to do I'm going to go and tell my friends guess what I had a great night out um, I went to this restaurant and they gave me the best customer service ever I think you should try it out or better yet I'm going to take you there yeah so you go out with your friends and you go back to the place and it's the same person there serving you so you know uh, you know he's the you know their name they know your name they give you excellent customer service again okay so if employees are trained to provide a really good customer service or a high level of customer service you're going to go back okay so that's all to do with the people we're looking at processes now now these are the systems and processes in place to deliver the product to the consumer um so it, it, it's the process okay it's it's everything um it's it's the process basically okay of purchasing the actual product or service and we're looking at an example here JD Sports you could go to JD Sports and we're looking at buying trainers okay so you could go to JD Sports browse the store select your trainers ask for your size try it on walk around ask for a different size or keep it the sales assistant places it behind the counter or you queue up and then you buy the product okay it's very time consuming um, and the queue could be very long as well so that's a very time consuming process that's how we would describe that process you could opt for number two yeah? you could stay at home in the comfort of your own house and buy the trainers online if you know the color and the size you want okay so if you already know the color and the size you want just go online go to the JD Sports website and purchase it online and hopefully it should come maybe the next day or within the next few days okay? you've saved yourself a lot of time there's no cost of traveling there's no uh, waste of time traveling to the actual store um, okay so you're saving on costs whether that's petrol costs a bus ticket or bus fare or a train ticket you're, you're saving okay you're saving money um, or oyster card yeah no no uh, top up on your oyster card and um, so you're saving money with petrol and public transport um, and you're saving time as well actually waking up getting ready um, hopping on the bus or driving to the JD Sports you're saving time and money Okay, just purchasing it online and it's a quick process it's a quick process okay all you do is you go online you input your details you put in your bank details and that's it you order it um, we've got number two so the systems and processes in place to deliver the product to the consumer we're looking at ordering food now you could go to the restaurant you could phone them okay so so we've got different examples that you could go to the actual restaurant 
um, and order some food and wait for your food and take it back home. Okay, so you physically go in. You could phone them from home and make your order and then they deliver it to you. Okay, you could purchase it online on their website. So you, again, you're at home, you go on the website, input your details, input your bank details, um, and that gets delivered to your house. Or you could purchase through um, the Uber Eats app. Okay, now if you purchase through an Uber Eats app, um, it's quite a process, isn't it? I think it's on the next slide, I'm not too sure. Um, but I'll explain it and then, I'll, and then we'll see if it's on the next slide. Um, but you could, purchase, you could purchase it through an Uber Eats app, okay? So if you go onto Uber Eats, um, well, the first thing you have to do is download the app, okay? You have to download the app. After that, you have to search for which store you want to buy your food from. After that, you input your details. After that, you input your bank details. Um, and then that's that. You're done, yeah? Now, you could say that's a bit of a long process, yeah? All the way from downloading the app to purchasing your food. But once you do that the first time, the second time is easier, right? Your details are actually saved on the system, on the app. So that makes the process quicker, faster, okay? Um, and some of my students were saying, sir, it's even faster than that. All you do is click on a button that says um, uh, reorder, and the same order comes back again. So, that make, so Uber Eats is making their process really quick, yeah, really fast. Now, we're looking at um, the gym membership. So, for example, um, their process is that you can, uh, you can manage your membership online. Okay? You download the app, you can track your progress online, you can check the gym capacity online, you can check if there's any personal trainers free um, online, and you can book them or book some classes, you can bring a friend on the app, um, you can cancel or rejoin your membership all on the app. Okay, so their process is slightly different. You don't have to go into the actual gym to do these things. You can do it on the app. Okay, and and of course this makes it quicker again. You're saving time actually traveling into the gym, um, and saving the cost as well of traveling into the gym. You can do it from the tip of your fingers. Okay. Now we're looking at physical environment. Now the physical environment is uh, experienced by the customer. Okay, what is the actual physical environment that the customer goes? And experiences okay what does it look like what is it okay so we've got two examples here. I've got a gym again now when we go to a gym what do we see what's physically there okay we've got weights machines a sauna sometimes a steam room a shower a swimming pool changing rooms toilets private classes going on and the turnstile for the entrance and exit okay um, an example two is a supermarket, um, and, and, and of course we're looking for the gym to be very hygienic and clean, um, especially now with COVID. Um, if you've been to a gym during you know, these, these times, these recent times, there's usually a cleaner just going around and just cleaning the equipment down um, in the gyms I go to anyway. Um, and there's also like uh, tissue paper there and um, the antibacterial uh, stuff there that you just you wash it down yourself okay so gym should be uh, fairly clean and uh, COVID compliant a second example is a supermarket what's the physical environment of a supermarket well we've got a frozen section a clothing section a fruit section a till a self service a self service checkout if you want to do it yourself we've got a bakery we've got a toy section electronics click and collect we've got so many different things when it comes to a supermarket okay we've also got a car park Okay, for both of them. So sometimes a gym will have a car park, and usually a supermarket has a car park. All right, and a supermarket also has an area for the trolleys as well. So don't forget about all of these things. And and a supermarket also has sometimes a cash point near it. Okay. So that's the seven P's. Um, whatever your business is, the industry is, you need to try to apply the seven P's to your business, to your industry. Okay. So I'm going to say good luck. And if you can uh, do me a favor and follow me on Instagram um, and TikTok, Mossin underscore teacher. Thanks a lot.